uh, the game today. So you're already part of DeadSec. You already have a small team assembled, but we're looking for uh, a new recruit. You know, our game being all about play as anyone, that's what we want to show off to everybody today, that we can actually go out there, play, play as anyone, right? So that means any person in this bar, any people out on the street, any people in this world, you can play as them. Recruit them to your team, uh, convince them to join your cause, and we're going to start off by finding someone to do that with. Yeah, so we're, we're walking around, we're looking, we're yeah. seeing some traits. Yeah, what Matt's doing here is he's profiling the different uh, people in the bar, and you're getting a little bit of information on those people. And the uh, green line highlighting stats in the middle there, that's their inherent traits. And that's either a personal boost or a team boost for helping out your team. So that's just one of the things you could use to make your decision of who you want to join DeadSec. Uh, could be totally based on any other preference you like. Maybe you like the sound of their voice. Maybe they look cool. Maybe you like uh, the way they sit on a chair. Maybe you like his uh, posture on the chair there. <laughs> yeah, That's like a cool guy for sure. Matt's yeah. going around saving a couple of those people to his contacts tab. Okay. Even looking outside, he might pull a couple in from the world. Really, literally, play as anyone. <laughs> and we're starting with a grandma once again. That seemed to be a pretty big hit the other day. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, luck of the draw. We do, we do start the demo with uh, um, a random selection of characters. We happen to pull a good one for the uh, stream today, which is uh, always nice. Very nice. I like that skill. That's my that's my kind of player right yeah. there. Okay, I think that's probably enough. We've probably got a few people saved up to the team now. We can pop open that menu. This is our contacts tab. So this is a deep profiler giving you all kinds of in-depth information about the characters, everything from their age, occupation, their salary, as well as their relationships in the world. You see this person has an uncle and a cousin. Those are real people out in the world right now. We could go find his uncle, meet up with him. If we were to do something to his uncle, this guy is not gonna like it. They'll actually respond to the stuff you're doing out in the world and react to that. And that'll affect that progress bar in the middle. You see there, Matt taking a cruise around London, showing that this guy has a schedule. He's going to actually be at different places in the day. If you were to go to uh, the pharmacy at 6 a.m., you'll find this guy is running errands there, and you'll bump into him Getting an early the start to the day, I like yeah, it's that. it's a full, realized yeah. simulation, yeah. so very exciting stuff. So uh, we'll go back in. We'll see in the middle there, we got the dead sex support bar. Oh, yes. All the different characters in the world, they have uh, different feelings towards dead sex when you meet them, right? So some got people, a few opposers Some right people here. are opposed, some people yeah. are neutral, some people all have a very positive opinion. And to get someone on your team, what you have to do is convince them. So you got to move that bar up. You got to do favors for them, intervene in their lives in ways that will change their opinion of dead Make sex. sure they're down with the cause. Yeah, they're not just willing to join without uh, you proving that it's, it's worth doing and, and helping them out with stuff. Uh, so normally what we do is intervene, do a bunch of favors. Uh, in the interest of time for the stream today, we're going to do a little uh, E3 cheat and okay. hack that bar all the way up to the top. Sprinkle Looks like Matt's uh, going to take us uh, George Penn here. I like it. Look at that yeah. hair. This guy's That's got a tattoo on his a forehead. Sick, <laughs> sick face tattoo. What can you tell <laughs> me like about cool him, Bagley? Apparently he's been busy planting evidence for Albion. Interesting. We should look into this. Uh, so we have uh, added the guy as a oh. potential recruit. Now all we got to do is find where George went to. Looks like he might have walked away while we were uh, rambling on there. <laughs> he's walked his way back in the world. He's I got you. stuff to do. He's got a schedule. Yeah. He's got stuff to do. He's out there in the world doing it. He needs to handle all his stuff so he can get to the pharmacy by 6 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Matt is playing as a low mobility character. Yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> We're gaining a little bit of ground. It's just yeah, yeah. gradually, gradually yeah. Uh, making our way up there. Low mobility characters can do everything everybody else can do. They're just going to go about it a, a little bit slower. So, look at that hair. <laughs> what do you want? You've been rather naughty. Dead sets caught wind that you're planting evidence for Albion. I am not doing it by choice. Oh. They're blackmailing. If I don't follow them lead, me don't. Right. And if someone made that dirt disappear? You're going to infiltrate Albion to get rid of the evidence? If you did that, I'd owe you something serious, but I'd never expect it. Shit. I'd consider lending him a hand. Could turn out to be useful. Albion store sensitive data like this on air gap servers, so zeroing those hard drives will solve this problem and put an end to this whole evidence planting scheme. Perfect. Tell me how to get there. Uh, 
So there we go. We cheated up that bar to get his support up high, but he still wants us to do uh, one big favor for him before he's really willing to join the team. So and that's what we're doing now. That's exactly what we're going to do. See Matt uh, cruising down the streets here. Beautiful Westminster district of oh, London. Yeah. Uh, you know, the big iconic ben. Big yep. Ben there. Parliament next to that. Pulling down up on the Thames here. Ooh, the that Lond London Eye. The London so, Eye. Actually, I mean, obviously, uh, this this looks gorgeous. Yeah. And, you know, we're in the, Thank I guess, you. relatively, yeah. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, you know, we're in the relatively near future. How, how do you and the team go about sort of creating the London you want while staying true to what London is today? Uh, tricky, <laughs> tricky, tricky <laughs> question. Delicate balance. Here, but, uh, I mean, essentially what we do is we start off with a lot of research. We went there in person. We, we've done our, uh, you know, our homework, so to speak. You know, we've done a lot of investigations. We figured out what we wanted in there, the types of locations and the places. We knew we wanted to include as much as possible. So we got a very huge offering. We're gonna pull up the menu later and we can show you off how just how big and robust that world is. Cool. Um, we've also added new stuff, you know, out, straight out of our imaginations as well. So not just uh, taking the places that are there, but injecting some of our own places and personality into our version of what future London could be. This could be the new Scotland Yard in the near future. Yeah, and uh, based on actual Scotland Yard, but in our version of uh, the world, uh, things are a little different. So not just the Metropolitan Police anymore, they've been kind of relegated, pushed to the side by private military contractors who have kind of taken over the station. That's Albion, you'll notice their flags and propaganda and their soldiers patrolling the halls of New Scotland Yard. So it's safe to say it's, uh, you know, super locked down. He's not going to be able to just waltz in here with Granny and uh, hack those servers. <laughs> so he's going to do a little bit of scouting around. You notice the, uh, from time to time a, a wave emanating out for the player or the camera. That's Matt using the ping system, which okay. kind of data scrapes the world, finds different things in the world that he can interact with, like hacking into cameras, uh, setting up traps, profiling characters to add to his contacts tab. Matt doing a little bit of scouting around now. You know, trying to figure out where that blackmail server is. Looks like we've got a sight line. There. Person chipping in time to time says Bagley. Yeah. That's your sentient AI assistant. Kind of like a hacked version of an Alexa or a Siri. He's kind of the cornerstone, uh, linking all your team together. And he's going to pop in time to time, give you some hints and tips, and kind of help guide you on your way throughout the the journeys of Watch Dogs. And we're, we're seeing the skills as well when we're profiling these, uh, you know, these guys that are effectively standing in our way. It's yeah, those are real people too. You know, you can profile them, save them to your contacts tab. If, if Matt doesn't kill them, we could even uh, recruit them later to the team. It's harder to recruit the dead. <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's wagging his fingers. Hey, are we going lethal or no? All no, right. no, no, okay. no. I think, I think we're going to try and uh, do this a little stealth. Okay. But it is a systemic demo, so you know, anything can and, and will go wrong, I'm sure. Using that hack distract in there, he deactivated the security device, make his way in there a little easier. He found that server in the back room there, but now he's encountered a, a locked door obstacle. Fortunately, there's uh, someone out in the world that has the key card to that door. Mm. Matt is playing the hacker class today, so that comes with a little extra special perk. He's got his little spider bot buddy there, whipping out navigating the world with that. That spider can even do takedowns on enemies, has a drone uh, turret function, so you can actually go and... Uh, if you want to go aggro. Yeah, if yeah. you wanted to take that guy out with the turret, that would uh, be completely possible. Yeah, very close there, Matt. Okay, <laughs> taking him out anyways. To... A little face hugger yeah. uh, oh action boy. there. That looked comfortable. The uh, spider bot did self-destruct, but not to worry, there's a little cooldown in the timer. That'll regenerate over time, and it'll be able to redeploy that later. Very cool. So we got that key card, not a physical key. We're in the future, right? So it's an RFID key that he hacked digitally, kind of uh, remote pocket pick. <laughs> yeah, Granny's not our most capable hand-to-hand -hand fighter. <laughs> so, uh, so we do uh, equip her with a stun gun so we can do a little bit more uh, oh. aggressive takedowns with hand-to-hand -hand as she won't carry her quite her weight as someone else with the, uh, the melee system. She's got some friendly emotes there too as well. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about the mask as well. It looks like he's handling business, but... Yeah, we're in a restricted area, right? So you can't just go in there with your face exposed. Uh, all the characters in the systemic demo going off the rails right now. Oh. <laughs> Those guys getting in here. Granny going loud, pulling out that weapon. We do have a choice, lethal or non-lethal. 
Matt's choosing right now to use the non-lethal shock rounds so those people aren't dead. Granny's just putting them to sleep. Very kind and sympathetic grandma. Time to make the, Clear out time to make the exit, yeah. yeah. We're going to make our way there. Oh, feel for those knees. <laughs> Hard on the knees, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's moving fast. Chaos breaking out in the yeah. streets. Yeah. Well, nope. mask is going back on, coming back off. <laughs> Maybe you want to run away from here, man. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here before things go more off the rails. Dead set here. We cleaned up the dirt Albion had on you. You're free. You seen it? Look, it is not normally my way to rob shopkeepers. But I was in that situation. I owe you. Don't be a stranger, love. We just may take you up on that favor someday. You got it. You need help? I'm the first one you call, you hear me? <laughs> we got George. So there we go. We, yeah, we got George. He expressed his willingness to join DeadSec. So we're going to take him up on that, obviously, right? We can uh, recruit George. When you recruit a new operative, you have the opportunity to select their class. So this gives you a little bit more customization to not only play the characters you want, but play them how you want as well. So we were already showing you guys the hacker class with the spider bot ability. That's more of our uh, remote infiltrator type class. We have our enforcer, which is kind of a run and gun, heavy weapon specialist with a sticky mind special ability. And the infiltrator class, stealth and melee focused. Uh, they have an AR cloaking ability, which allows them to go invisible, uh, or at least make people think they're invisible. Mm and even shroud bodies. May, may I? May I choose? As long I, as it's the infiltrator class. <laughs> I would, well, I would love to see the infiltrator. That's how I like to play. And I think, uh, you know, Barube also uh, likes to take it uh, slow and yeah. steady where possible. I was just joking about that. You could have chose any class, yeah. but we want to show off the most amount of stuff possible okay. to, our, to our fans today. So we're going to try and get through all three classes at some oh. point in the demo. Well then. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So Matt had a perk available to equip. So even beyond the class system, further customizing your characters the way you like to play, we have perks. So perks are different abilities you can assign to that player for further customization. You'll see we have four available in the E3 demo today. We'll obviously have a lot more in the full version of the game. Gotcha. And and Matt just went ahead and I picked one without I didn't, consulting I didn't, us. I didn't it's okay. Catch that. What, what perk do we got, Matt? We went for the lunge. He's got the lunge perk. What is the lunge perk? Lunge perk's going to give you a little bit of a increased takedown radius okay. when you're uh, going through that layout. Close the yeah, gap. Yeah, close the gap quick. Okay. Take those guys out from a little further when and he's that, playing. I mean, that seems to play to his uh, particular skill set as well with the grapple damage. Exactly. Was, yeah. that, was that in your mind when you chose that, or did you know you were going to launch one? a merry band of misfits, hooligans, and radicals. Try to fit in. I'm onto uh, it. All right, got our super cool new operative. We did a tactical op swap there, which uh, tags the person out on the spot. Our granny's going back to her routine, off to tea time or, or to bed. It's, a, it's Doing it's what late. she needs to do. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Look at and this car. We're going to take our new operative on a story mission. So okay. we have a full robust campaign, of course. Uh, five unique op lines, all with their own thematics and in interesting characters and places to go to. Uh, very exotic missions. This one's more of our traditional British spy thriller, very James Bond-esque, okay. All right. you know, cloak and dagger Man, shit. Making our way back to Westminster, over to Westminster Abbey. You'll see Matt's driving an autonomous, uh, what we call a room on wheels vehicle. No steering wheel, no even steering column in there. Sit um, back and enjoy the ride. Sit back, enjoy. He's hacking it and remotely driving it. All yeah. the vehicles in the world are autonomous capable. Okay. So he could have enabled the auto drive and, and sat back and had this drive him to his destination. Uh, Matt's not a very passive guy. So he, he likes to play. He likes to take control. So he's, he's driving there himself. Whoa. Where are we now? We're at the uh, famous Westminster Abbey yeah. Cathedral here. Notice we got a little social outreach going on here. The people of London reaching out, helping each other out with their lives. Uh, they're not happy with what's going on. They, they want they want to help. The people of London, they want to help each other, right? That's why, you know, you could believe that something like uh, DeadSec could be something that they'd be inspired to join and maybe make even a bigger difference in the world. 
But if you're not willing to do that, you could you could have uh, other options for for helping your 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 fellow people. Cool. Malik asked to be notified when you arrive, so have a seat. Won't be a moment. Now, we're, what we're about to see here is the characters we recruit and play as become the stars of the show. They they are fully immersed in the cutscenes with their own mannerisms and dialect and personalities and things will play out differently depending on who we've recruited and are playing as. I have to walk away. I haven't slept in 76 hours. I, I can't do this. You're just tired. No, I'm afraid. I know who Sycorax is and I don't think I can beat her. You don't have to. Just give me the name. I'm not asking. <laughs> this guy is great. That was a good thing. All right. Okay. <laughs> Trusting you with this. Hey, George, anymore? So we've had to find another uh, recruit to Gone bring over Gone but not here. forgotten. Gone but not forgotten. Yes. Exactly. So who do we have here? Uh, so now we have our, our new character. Uh, uh, I didn't catch his name there. We pop open the profiler. There okay. we go. <laughs> Likes to pick fights at the pub. Lyle. So we and got Lyle he obviously Bigelow. spends some good time at the pub because his skill is plus 75% melee damage while drunk. Yeah, that's not <laughs> accidental. Our, our traits and their stories, they're connected, uh, right? They so line up. that's nice. derived from their information and their backstories to uh, make the world simulation more robust and. and uh, Accurate, I guess. Cool. Let's dig back in. I know we're anxious to get back into the gameplay. Yeah, we're going to get back into the game. We're going to be heading all the way up to the top of the map there, Camden Market. Uh, while we're here, we'll take a little bit of time to uh, peruse, <laughs> peruse around See the, what's uh, going on. Yeah. the uh, our version of London. It's a very big offering, super dense. We got eight unique boroughs, all with their own identities, uh, cultural landmarks. Um, simulated populations, different people, different places. Uh, very um, robust world to explore and discover. And thankfully with London, there's a very robust transit system with the metro to work with. Yeah, that's right. We uh, have to take advantage of that you know, iconic underground tube station as our fast travel system. It's just one of what many ways we can get around the world. Popping out here in the iconic Camden uh, High Street, this so Cam Camden's a very different vibe from Westminster. Westminster's a little more traditional, buttoned down, you know, kind of a traditionally classic, uh, iconic British location, whereas Camden Market's more of a part of counterculture. Uh, that building a, has a scorpion coming out of it. Yeah, yeah. tattoo shop with yeah. a giant holographic scorpion. We're in the future, you know, <laughs> take advantage of that. You know, at least on the art side, we're injecting some uh, some uh, a lot of flavor a lot of flair infused into the world with our uh, future technologies it is a famous shopping district in the world as well so this is uh, just like real life a lot of clothing shops here in fact every single clothing store in our in our world is interactable oh. so you can go there interact with the smart glass panel on the window buy some interesting uh, threads for your character let's go shopping. Or your team a little bit of a disclaimer here, work in progress features, some of the iconography and inventory will be missing, uh, but we got enough stuff equipped that uh, we can find Matt some uh, nice clothes to wear. Or remove some clothes. <laughs> or remove some yeah. clothes as well. And a All slick right. jacket. Yeah, and Matt likes in the leather the, and spikes. Uh, eclectic crowd in uh, Camden High Street here. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Interesting choice. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reflection cool. of self. Yeah, it yeah, looks I cool. Like it. Yeah, I'm digging cool it. It's a bit of a Freddie Mercury thing going on here. Yeah, I got our operative decked out. You know, that doesn't affect his personality. That's just, you know, giving him a little flair. Making our way down, little, little, little token wheelie pop there on the bike. Going down to Camden Market. So Camden Market in our world, not quite the tourist trap it is in modern London. Got some other stuff going on. Yeah. Sycorax has three people in the area looking for Manning. Word would get back to her quickly if something were to happen to them. So you'd better hurry up and happen to them before they move on. So, as I was saying before, Bagley so rudely interrupted me. Um, <laughs> Camden Market, not quite the same place it is in, in modern London. In our version of the world, it's become quite dystopian. Uh, it's completely been taken over by organized crime unit. 
who have uh, come in here and set up their operations. A lot of black market activity going on in, in Camden Market. Got to shut that home. down. Yeah. Matt scouting around with a drone. We have uh, different drones all throughout the world. Cargo drones, news drones, uh, Wi-Fi drones. Uh, construction uh, drones. Construction drones, assault drones, riot drones, uh, oh a world full of drones. You can just go ahead and find those out in the world and pluck them out of the sky and take over control of them. It's like we got a bit of a grow up here or something? Yeah, little uh, legal black market activity going around. Something a little more serious than a grow up in this uh, back end of <laughs> the market. Yeah, those look like humans. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are not good people, right? Uh, please, please do not feel bad for them if Matt has to take a few of these guys out. You found that the gate was locked. Looking for another opportunity to uh, bypass the systems here. Getting creative, a little hacking of vehicles. Made himself a little uh, platform to jump off. Love it. Also spotting a cargo drone up in the sky there. Moving around the layout with an explosive payload. Hacking right in there. Taking control. Setting up some traps in the world. Big enough that we could even jump on there and ride it. Oh yes, Pretty and sweet. perhaps uh, Looks like he's lining something up. I don't know. I'm seeing a target at the bottom of that. Is that uh, too much of a spoiler? Well, it is a cargo drone, so it does have some, uh, some explosive, cargo. <laughs> oh. explosive payload there. Unleashing that on the uh, unsuspecting guys below. Opening the door. Getting creative, hacking a few things as he goes throughout his uh, exploration. Mm. Box head, sweet mask. <laughs> Flying in here, a little uh, Green Goblin style action yeah. going on. Taking advantage of that cargo drone. <laughs> I like that box head. He is playing the infiltrator oh. class there. Oh, suplex. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nicely done. And what was that? So what, <laughs> what he was doing there, he was hacking into people's optic nerve device to put a camouflage cloak on himself, hiding them from his vision, snuck in there with a little melee takedown and shrouded that dead body with the same device. So those people are hidden from people's sight. They're still there. They're not actually really gone. They're they're just uh, hidden from people's vision. Okay. Matt's yeah, showing off our, uh, a little more hands -on. our improved oh. melee system here. We got takedowns, dodges, grapples. And brutal finishers. Brutal finishers, yeah. Goodness. Uh, the advantage of taking people out with the hand-to-hand, -hand, of course, you know, those are people he could add to his contacts tab, and we could potentially even win them over and recruit them later. You know, it's going to take quite a bit more convincing Again, than the uh, people forgive on the street, and forget, but, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. They have problems in their lives, too, that they're, I'm sure, grateful if we would help them out. Can't beat them, join them. In here, we got two out of three people neutralized. Taking out some drones, not just friendly drones, but combat drones patrolling the skies as well. Coming in all flavors. Got a guy in here in some kind of demented black market operating theater. You know, good stuff can't be happening in there. This is definitely a bad dude. Shut him down. Shut him down. Let's see. Looks like Matt's going out, hunting down the key card, get access to that door. There's that RFID again, just getting in range. RFID. Keeping those drones off his back. <laughs> you got a box on your head, man. A little problem see? It's hard. It's hard work. Different different masks obviously available for, for your characters to uh, find and buy and equip. Give them your own uh, customized flavors. Oh. Did a oh. <laughs> Double drop kick. <laughs> Wham! Wow. Nicely done. Nicely done. Look at that. Your plan worked. There's more buzz coming from Sycorax's organization. There. A little parkour action. Climbing wasps. up there for escape. Well, I may have sent everyone in Sycorax's network CCTV footage of what you just did to their friends. That got them moving. Is that safe? No, not really. But then you're a violent insurgent who runs around in a colorful mask punching mercenaries, stealing top secret intelligence and driving through street cafes. Define safe. Yeah, fair enough. So what now? That's easy. Your fellow operatives are following all of the lieutenants around. So look at that. One of them just left a dead drop in a rubbish bin in Trafalgar Square, which sounds like a lead to me. That's where we're going then. Right? 
All right, we got the next beat of our objective way down in uh, Trafalgar Square, Love iconic it. Trafalgar Square, symbol of free speech and public assembly in the world. Uh, you'll notice Matt's looking at, he's got other operatives out in the world going about doing their thing. That's one means of traveling around the world. It's actually switching to your different operatives. The op swap and, and you were Yeah, about. you yeah. could go to where they are or we could take the tube. Interest of time, we'll jump on that tube and, and right. make our way down there super quick. Getting a look at Trafalgar Square now. Yeah, Trafalgar Square, like I said, a symbol of free speech, public assembly. Uh, the people in London out in full force expressing their frustration with what's happening in, in their world, showing that, you know, resilient British defiance. You can find and learn the old word. Don't worry, she's very bad. What? Thanks. Matt taking it, taking a good look around, maybe profiling some people to see Saving as they're the scheduled. Contacts, yeah. They're right where they're supposed to be, but they're adding some interesting operatives for later on his contacts tab. Love it. <laughs> Here we go, Matt hacking in that camera. Always a good idea before you enter any location to Recon. get a good scout around, yeah, yeah. do your reconnaissance. He's noticing some uh, authority in the uh, vicinity. We've got some Albion guards up there. Uh, likely to be a, a trouble situation. Yeah, brewing about here. to get into some action. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, take this opportunity to switch to one of our operative classes. Take one of our uh, assault characters there. Yeah, let's go with her. She looks good. She looks tough, capable. Feeling the heat already. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Just like that in there. Tac op swap. Just got to find our ob objective. Matt scouted out a little uh, trash bin dead drop there going to pick up. And again, you'll see that our characters become fully immersed in the cinematics. She's going to have a, a different voice and different actions as well. Mm -hmm. They are truly the stars of the story. Love it. The characters you recruit. Hello, DedSec. You're trying to stop me, but my work isn't done yet. I don't want to make the people of this city suffer anymore, but sometimes things have to get a little bit worse before they can get a hell of a lot better. You can survive this, but you have to surrender. Right fucking now. I'll never surrender to you! You're confused. Did you think I'd say all this if I hadn't already won? He's got frame for a, a terrorist activity there. We got the authorities closing in on him. You know, completely surrounded, not just on the ground. Drones shooting him out of the sky as well. He is playing that assault class. He's got that proximity mine. He's able to throw in the world, detonate on characters. It looks like he's in some trouble though. He's got some heavy artillery oh. going. Uh, surrender or get back up. What's he gonna do? We gotta get back up. We gotta get back we gotta up. Get back we gotta up. get back up. Don't give up. You got this. Doing a load of this. Oh. oh, he does not got this, oh. it turns out. That's that's it, he's done, he's dead. She's done as well, our Horton. character. Um, London, greatest city in the world. Well, used to be. Now it's a right mess. Government's fucked off. Extremists are grabbing power. Organized crime slicing up the boroughs. The war dogs are out, and freedom's a bloody joke. But this ain't their London. This is our London. And there's a new power growing. It's all of us, together. We're building a resistance, one recruit at a time. What's my favorite operative up to this evening? And no, I never say that to the others. Scouting talent, Bagley. So gob shut, eyes peeled, yeah? I have no eyes, and if I did, I wouldn't feel them. It is severe. Heightened security measures are in effect throughout London city limits. 
Bloody drones are everywhere, kicking our fucking teeth in lately. Then I recommend you recruit someone who can deal with drones. Brilliant. Never would have thought of that. You're clear. Sod off. All right. Easy. I'm complying. Hmm. Impressive skill set. Sure, but we need a drone expert, Raj, not a shit kicker. File that one away for later. Well now. Jimmy Shaw. No formal engineering training, but he has several mischief charges for hijacking Albion drones. Hold still. Fuck you, man. You've got no right. Fuck you, now. We find our drone expert and he's about to get himself nicked. A dead set. Get out of here. Best not to escalate if you don't. Oh, just ignore me! Prepare to be detained. Nah. Not today. Hold. Prepare to be detained. Auto drive now disabled. Several chase drones are converging on your position. No shit. Planning to tell me about the bloody checkpoint. Oh, there's a checkpoint. Move! Move! to feed the birds here. Now they're all bloody machines. Get used to it. In the long march of progress, everything dies eventually. Eventually, even you, Bagley, I'm sure. Now there's my Ellen. Speaking of death, you'll never guess what just happened to Ian. Oh, for God's sake, Bagley, a little respect. Then let's finish what he started. He was working on a new recruit, a drone expert. That's promising. What do we know about him? Albion scanned Jimmy just before Ian was killed. I should be able to predict his next move from that data. Unfortunately, his records are locked up tighter than your compression stockings. Let's get someone over there, Bagley. Chop, chop. Ready for some action, Naomi? Always. But this recruit better be worth all the trouble. According to the Scotland Yard records, Jimmy's sister was killed by Clan Kelly. We believe he's seeking his revenge inside Camden Market. Camden Black Market, you mean? Yes, the Kellys are rumoured to run all sorts of illicit goods out of the old stables. Some with fingers and toes. If he's gone in there alone, he's in big trouble. The Kellys have this place on full lockdown. Hmm, I have an idea. Today, everything's all fine and dandy. So try not to get killed, or we'll be in the red for the day. Copy that. Huh? What the hell? Is this a meme? This better be a joke, or I'm standing. Cannabis 
and fentanyl together at last through the miracle of genetics. The Kellys are moving loads of weapons out of here. They're not your typical back alley shanks. Stables. It's human trafficking. Found Jimmy. Cheeky shit. Fuck you. And here we thought he might be in some sort of trouble. So, um, how are you going to get him out of there? Lots of hugs and kisses. On your feet, mate. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Are you dead sick? Hope you're sharper than you look. Jesus Christ. Someone else beat these dead sick pricks. Back up, honey, back up. We showed those fucks, didn't we? We almost died out there tonight. Look, thanks for helping me, but I can handle myself. Right. You think you're better off alone. You think everyone else has given up and there's no one to trust. That's what they want you to think, and that's how they'll take us, one at a time. It doesn't have to be that way. Together, we can change things. Wait. What happened to that bloke who helped me? He didn't make it. <sighs> Fuck it. Welcome to DeadSec, James. Yeah. Okay, so... Where do I go to meet the rest of the crew? You don't need to go anywhere. Look around you. Everyone has a reason to fight, and DedSec is open to anyone. Anyone? Welcome to the Resistance. And people thrown in cages like animals. Oh, and who could forget the killer robots everywhere? So yeah, that's all gone a bit shit. It's up to us to take our city back. Thing is, we can't do it alone. We need to recruit a resistance. I know what you're thinking. Where do we start? Open your eyes and take a look around. Look here. Look at him. No, not him. Him. Former MI5. Duty never ends. He can get anywhere and erase anyone. See her? Let's kick those bastards out of London. 
she got kicked out of Oxbridge Robotics School for teaching him to uh, reproduce. <laughs> and that fellow over there, proper belly. Come on, come at me. He'll crack your skull just for looking that funny. This had better be fucking good. And allow me to introduce you to the deadliest of the lot. She's not old, she's experienced. Like I said, you can recruit anyone, and I mean bloody anyone. Him, her, everyone is a secret weapon. Find them, recruit them, build the resistance. Let's unfuck this world. terribly wrong. All is about as bad as it could possibly go. Your mission is to build a popular resistance in order to fight back against the sort of emergence of this authoritarian regime. From the open world and uh, making them the characters in your resistance and the, the heroes of your gameplay and the stars of your story. Play as anyone basically on the street, in the pub, just anywhere in your game, even characters in a mission, can be potential recruits into your DedSec team. You can profile them, you can learn about them, your team, and be part of your group of DedSec members. These facts about their lives, and we've sort of just taken that to the logical conclusion of, okay, these aren't little bit simulated people in our world, how that affects gameplay and the fact that you can bring them onto your team. And so your DedSec is the people you've recruited. And my game's not gonna be the same as your game, it's not gonna be the same. Where the new Dead Second London emerges from is kind of part of the, the mystery of the, of the entire game. There isn't one star dude in the box who you get your story and your cutscenes from. It's literally the people that you recruit from the world are the stars of your story and the heroes of your gameplay. It really is about who you've chosen to pull onto your team. One of the main motivations of developing Crew to Granny off of the street and, and you know, take her into the big climactic cutscene, exactly. different animation, uh, no matter which character you take in. You haven't compromised that narrative experience and nope. make sure that, you know, these people who you recruit to your team from a AAA game. Wait, what happened to that bloke who helped me? He didn't make it. Every character in our game comes with them a unique call a trait. So some people are good at punching and melee, and some people are good at guns, and some people are good at... Maybe what you really need is the fact that your operatives keep getting arrested because you're not great at combat, and maybe you need to like recruit a lawyer, or you recruit a former lawyer, or you recruit some criminal that's been in jail a bunch of times that have specific traits have that... Have a good melee trait, or if you find someone who's an ex-spy, they might be really good with uh, silenced pistols. Everyone sort of has a kind of opinion about DedSec, whether they support it or they oppose it, and that will determine how much work you need it. The more someone dislikes DedSec, the more work you've got to do to get them onto your team. So you might have to do two or three different favors for them. And these favors being a loved one out of jail or uh, clearing a debt that they've got with one of the crime families, and they could also be really lighthearted. You're taking a character that already sort of has this internal life, they have problems, um, they have memories, they remember what you've done. You're taking that character and then you're putting them on your team. And then all those sort of things that that quality, their voice, the way they act, the way they move. Once people come onto your team, you continue to customize them. So we've got a full progression path for each character. You level up, you earn XP, you have abilities. So like you're really customizing your team. The characters remember, and they also remember when you do things. I'm fighting a bunch of enemies, and maybe I kill five enemy soldiers. Those five enemy soldiers had friends and families. They'll remember that. They like DedSec a lot less. So like there's like sort of this um, cascading effect as you do act. Permadeath is a really important part of Watch Dogs Legion, and we really wanted this to feel like a, you know, a game about serious issues with serious consequences. And further, when you're building a team, we really want... We actually chose London before the, you know, the current political issues that are happening in the United States. So London provides really the perfect context for a, for a Watch Dogs game. And that apparatus, and how does sort of state surveillance take shape in that world? And so we're able to really make our world feel 
grounded and credible because we're starting from a place that's extremely familiar and based on reality, and then going someplace that's sort of fantastical uh, without completely detaching and becoming something that's sort of just science fiction. Con artists and construction workers and archaeologists, it's like, all right, so what kind of things can they do in the world? Like, start thinking about um, not just a cool system that you're making, but what are you populating that system with? And then start exploring what are the interesting connections that show up between those two. The way anybody you see on the street feel like they belong in that as the skills and appears in the cinematics and has her unique personality stay with them when they become playable. That's you, it belongs to the player. I'm not the hero, you're the hero. That's what I want people to take.